So you sell the tusks? Off another creek, yeah. Not uh, not from the boneyard. We, oh. We keep everything from the boneyard in one collection. But we have a bunch of different uh, mining operations going. And when you do have them, what do you do? You put it up for auction or something? You put it at Christie's or what do you do? No, we sell them. Told this guy, go ahead and sell them if you want. Wow. He, he's got a real upscale jewelry store in Jacksonville. So if someone wants to buy a, a mammoth tusk, how much does one of those cost? Um, that pair he's selling right there is like 250000 225000 something like that. Wow. Yeah. I know a rich guy who bought a saber-toothed tiger head. Bought Better. a real saber-toothed tiger skull. Yep. Probably bought it from your guy. Stole it from you. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they have a, they have a lot of uh, saber-toothed tigers, I think, in Eastern Europe, Western Europe, that area. Mm. But Alaska. You they know, find them in Los Angeles. It's the La Brea Tar Pits. Yeah, which that, is bizarre if you're around la brea you're like surely i'm in the wrong place yep and then you go to the la brea tar pit museum and you're like what the fuck? it's right here we found we found more bones in 15 years than they've found in 100 whoa and i've been there and they have a lot of dire wolves in that display yeah uh but you know dire wolves never lived up in alaska that's what's crazy is that your one five acre plot has changed where they thought dire wolves lived. Not not just them, but I mean this, the fact that they're finding badger. We find badger skulls. Some of the experts say, "Well, badgers didn't live here back in the ice age." But my mo one of my most significant finds ever is a blue feather. A blue feather. I have it on my site someplace. That was buried deep inside the hollow end of a ten foot mammoth tusk that was under 65 feet of overburden in the gravels. And you know, when you're cleaning out a tusk, when you get it out of the ground and you, the material starts to dry, we put clamps on those tusks so as they dry, they don't split. And out of the end comes this blue feather. That's it. People go, what's your most significant find ever? I go, that blue feather. Is that a peacock? I don't know what the that is people go why don't you carbon date it okay well there's not a whole lot left of it now so let's burn it all the f up so we can know how old it was they have no idea what that is I have no clue but jo i've heard from paleontologists you're, you're gonna call this one that's impossible there were no birds up here with blue feathers huh during the ice age so but I see yellow. I've always wondered I, that. I see yellow in there too, though. Yeah, there's yellow in there for sure. I've always wondered that in terms of like how they know. Like the fossil record is fascinating to me because it's not easy for things to become fossils. It's very difficult. It requires very specific circumstances. And most things, the vast majority of things, never become fossils. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a the Forrest Galante. There's a, see if you can find this video. Giant scaly animal that could fly so when you take when you break that down you think about the fact that large birds had a hard time being fossilized because their bones are so porous right so because bones they have like hollowish bones they break down very easily and they don't fossilize so the 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 group that says this basically they're they're saying the evidence is the reason there's no fossils of dragons is because they had bird bones and they were actually very delicate animals but a handful of these small small a small population of these giant li flying lizards existed and basically encompassed all these different countries where they all depicted fighting dragons in their own way and they were all killed off by you know knights or whatever it is and then didn't fossilize yeah wow whoa makes you think yeah the, the fossil record is a really fascinating thing because we're they're they're getting their understanding of what existed and didn't exist based on what was fossilized and it's so, I mean, especially when you come into dinosaurs, <clears throat> they're always finding a new dinosaur. I mean, it's a regular thing that they find a new species of dinosaur. You know, every few years they find something. The university uh, curator, Pat Druckenmiller, that was on the video you watched, he's, he's got six or seven dinosaurs that he's discovered himself. And when you discover it, you get to name it. Ah. So he's, he's that kind of, he's, he's really legit. 
And uh, we've run into a problem with people that say they're paleontologists, but they're really just looking to get a collection going. Mm. And we're not interested in assisting. Mm. I would imagine that's a big thing with people. And the other thing is the AMNH is poison the well for me when it comes to sending anything outside, outside the state of Alaska. And the way it works in America, you, d you talked about in this documentary, that in some countries, like in Canada, if someone finds something, it becomes property of the country. Right. Crown but property. It, but in America, it's yours. If you own the land, it's yours. But if you find that what I'm finding on the state mine or state landing claim or mining claims or federal claims, they own it. They're the mm. landowner. They don't always take possession of it, but if they want to, they'll come in and s stop you from mining. I can't imagine why someone hasn't reached out to you, why there isn't like... They, oh, they have. You know what I told them? I'll only tell this story to Joe Rogan. <laughs> I've been l leaning on this crutch now for three years. You <laughs> it all up a little bit when you invited me on your show. <laughs> I had to have you on. I'm, I'm so fascinated by your page. And it's the story itself is even more crazy than I thought it was. I, I just thought, I, I didn't realize the scope of the collection. Oh, it's huge. Well, it's going to get a lot bigger, but we will not allow any of our fossils outside the state of Alaska. That's why we built that 5,000 square foot facility this fall. Mm. And uh, You might have to build another one. I, yeah, it's already in the works.